This is Year 10, first chemistry topic, first part of the booklet on chemical substances, reactions and essential resources. You need to know the difference between elements, atoms, molecules and compounds. The slideshow that I'm about to show you should show you the difference between them. You can play this slideshow over and over again. Atoms, these here, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, chlorine and fluorine, they are all existing on their own. Look, They're not joined to anything, so they are atoms. They are the smallest units that make up all matter. All matter, I mean solids, liquids and gases. When two or more atoms join together, a molecule is made. So you've got molecules here on the second row and the third row. Now the atoms can be the same or they can be different. It's still a molecule. An element is found on the periodic table. You've all got a periodic table in your planner. You can access a copy of the periodic table on the net. Elements are contained in the periodic table. They're all listed in order. They're all pure substances, so there's nothing else in them. So if I've got a block of aluminium, I've only got aluminium atoms in it. If I've got a block of rubidium, I've only got rubidium atoms in there. If I've got a cylinder of oxygen, I've only got oxygen atoms in there. They cannot be separated into simpler substances by physical or chemical means. We'll go into that later. An element only contains one type of atom. So we've only got nitrogen atoms in nitrogen. Chlorine atoms in chlorine. Sulfur is on your periodic table. You can find it. You should be able to find it towards the right hand side. And sulfur contains atoms of sulfur. The atoms are on their own. Now, when you look at oxygen, still on the periodic table, it's an element, O. But when oxygen exists as a gas, the atoms don't like being on their own. They join together. So it's always written as O2. On the periodic table, it's just O because that's the element it's made up of. But oxygen exists as a molecule of oxygen, O2. Compounds. Compounds, two or more different elements joined by chemical bonds. So in other words, these atoms here in the water and the NaCl, which is sodium chloride, and the carbon dioxide, they're all joined together by bonds, like arms holding on to each other. It's a molecule because there's more than one atom joined together. Made of elements in a specific ratio. What that means is water is always H2O. It wouldn't be H3O2. It would always be that ratio of atoms. Two atoms of hydrogen, one oxygen. Properties of the elements have changed. If we go for water, for example, water contains hydrogen, which is a gas, and oxygen, which is a gas. But when they join together chemically, they make the liquid water. And they can be only be separated by chemical means, not physical. What that means is it's difficult to separate them. You couldn't filter it or you couldn't boil it to evaporate one of the substances. Water contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, so it's that ratio. Sodium chloride contains one sodium and one chlorine atom. And carbon dioxide contains one carbon and two oxygens. Now, notice that the single atom, O in this case, C in this case, is in the center. <clears throat> A mixture, two or more pure substances that are not chemically combined, so they are easy to separate. So you can filter them, you can evaporate them. Examples of how to separate separate mixtures and we'll go into this in more detail in my second slideshow. Filtering. You can see filtering here. We've all done filtering in year seven, probably year eight, definitely year nine. 
you've got a solid in here, an insoluble solid, which means it doesn't dissolve, and a liquid. You pour it through. You've got the solid in the filter paper in the filter funnel, and you've got the liquid coming through into the conical flask. The solid is residue, and the liquid is filtrate. Distillation is another type of separation technique where you boil a mixture up, the water evaporates up here, comes down this tube as steam or water vapour, and you can see there's cold water around here, which cools it and condenses it, so separating a mixture. Then you've got a table on mixtures versus compounds. You've got a blank version of this, I think, in your booklet that you need to write in, or I might have given you full version and then I want you to look at a series of photos and tell if each photo represents an item composed of an element, compound or mixture.